Hello and welcome my friends. Today I would like to give you a very short and high overview on how you can build your own widget in Polarian. So something like this you see here on the screen, um, which is a little widget that displays epics and linked user stories. So let's get started. As you know, uh, widgets are a nice way in Polarian to visualize content in very different ways. I have other videos which explain a bit more uh, on how you can make them dynamic and how you can play with these widgets. So today I really want to focus on how you can build your own widget. So make your own little thing here appear on the screen that your other colleagues can use your, um, your cool widget. So how do you do that? Um, in Polarian, there's a place where you should um, store your widget, and actually, as you know, Polarian has under the hood Subversion. If we go into the repository browser, in the root directory, there is a directory .polarian, and the .polarian directory contains all the configuration data for Polarian, and there's a subdirectory called Pages, and in Pages, there is a directory Widgets, and in Widgets, you see the two uh, you see two example widgets. Uh, Polarian ships with many more widgets, but the standard widgets are not visible here because um, in case there are any updates, um, uh, the developers can ensure that they don't need to or they, don't, they do not change something you may have changed in the meantime. So this is why they are a bit isolated from the other widgets. If you want to create your own widgets, it has to be um, placed into this directory within Subversion. That means you need to do a subversion um, commit, a uh, subversion checkout, and a commit. So I hope you're familiar with subversion, um, because subversion provides um, a very nice way, basically, to take data from the, take files from the server, place it on your local drive, make some changes, commit the changes, which means put them on the server again, and everything is under version control. So you can roll back your changes and all that stuff, and that's really nice if you if you messed up something completely up in your configuration uh, it's really great uh, if you can roll back so we have these uh, what I did I checked out um, I checked out the subversion repository I'm working with I used this tortoise SVN uh, oh, let's go one directory up I used this tortoise SVN checkout command I took the path to my Polarian server. I replaced slash Polarian with slash repo, and this allowed me to check out the, uh, the Polarian repository. So I have now the whole repository here on my local drive. You may want to just check out your project or maybe just the root directory. Um, you need to have access to the directory to do that, actually. So if you cannot commit, that may mean that your administrators didn't allow you to make some changes in the repository, which makes sense because we don't want everybody to like, like do that. Okay, so I assume that you have access to the .polarian directory or at least to the .polarian directory in your project. And then you see there is a pages and the widgets directory. And the best way to learn how a widget works is take an existing one, copy it, and make little changes. So we call, we would uh, just rename this directory now to hello world. Hello world. And now let's get started. You see, there are a bunch of files inside this directory. Uh, the first one is the icon. I, I think that's pretty clear. The icon, that's the logo of your widget. So. It has to have the name icon.png. So what we do is let's just let's just delete this one for now and replace it with this one so that we have a different logo and call it and rename it to icon. The next thing, um, and I don't go now here straight in, in, in the row. I'll pick one I, I find I want to pick them in a different order. Next thing is the widget.properties. In this file, you specify the name of your widget. So in our case, the name is hello world. And then the tags um, variable, that's actually the tab in which your widget should appear. So we could have a tab called uh, cool 
stuff. Typically, would you would name it uh, with the name of your department or name of your company, so that all the widgets that you have created for your company will appear in this in this special compartment. That's the widget.properties. Then there is a details file. So you see for all the properties are little files. It's not so complex. So in the end, uh, you can just open, you see here, it's, it's the description, a small description. So what do we say? Oh, renders a little hello world message. Okay, seems, seems to make sense. Then there is a description.vm. In the description.vm, we have a little more description, and that's actually the, the part where we say, if we have any parameters, we could describe them here in a bit more detail. So that's actually your help for the widget. So if you want to avoid that everybody in your company calls you and asks you, hey, what's that, what's that little parameter? What do I need to enter here? Good advice, add the stuff here. So maybe it saves you a bit of um, a bit of phone calls, a bit of support for your widget. So we have the description, we have the details, we have the widget, we have the icon. And then there are the two cool things. That's where the real meat is happening, rendering parameter, and we will not do this for now. So let's just commit what we have. So I'll select all the files, um, add a little message, like uh, create our first hello world widget. That's actually quite nice because um, by adding now a commit message, um, I have also complete version control over my changes. So I can, if somebody messes something up, uh, I can roll it back. I think I told that already. So what happens? Let's go uh, into our project. Let's go to our example page. Example widget page. And I hope that now we will find our new widget. You see here, there is the cool stuff. There is the Hello World widget, renders a little Hello World message. Um, what we didn't change was the behavior. So it still renders the traceability table. And we also didn't change the parameters. So that's the last part um, you want to customize in the widget. But for now, hey, it's already there. And I can just, uh, well, I can say, hey, have you seen my nice widget? It displays the traceability table. And it was actually not by me. So I can cheat a bit. And um, well, now comes the bit harder stuff because now we need to think about what parameters should our widget have. Um, maybe you don't have any parameters, then you are already done. Then you just need to you basically need to delete all the parameters. For now, let's just assume we have one parameter and um, I will not focus on the details, how the parameters work, it's, but it's, it's always the same principle. So you, you have a parameters um, object, and with a put method, you add parameters into this object. And Polarin later on reads out the parameters object and then renders these parameters based on the type they have. So for example, you see here, there is a, a checkbox parameter. So that's the ID of my parameter. That's um, um, the label which appears on the screen. So we call it uh, uh, a really uh, useless checkbox. And you see here the dollar factory uh, gives us a factory which allows us to create parameters. And then there are different parameters which I can create. For example, here is a Boolean parameter. There are strings, there are composites, a lot of stuff which allows you to put parameters in parameter, uh, in, in, in components or in, into composites so you can group parameters. There are a lot of stuff that you can do here, but let's, let's keep it simple for now. So we just want to add one parameter with the ID checkbox, should be a Boolean, I should display this one, and in the end you just add build. So that's the final command for Polarin so that it knows, okay, it's done. So this method put takes two, um, two variables. You see the ID of the parameter and then actually the created object, which is created here with this uh, concatenation of methods. Factory, give me a Boolean and then build it. And then we just pass this object to the parameters. 
And that's it. So now we have added a little checkbox. The code itself is managed in the render.vm file. If we open this one, you see there is all this velocity code where the parameters are read out and da 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 da. So that's where the magic is happening. And our magic is really simple for today. Our magic is just uh, we add a little heading and say hello world. Let's save it and now let's commit all our changes and let's see what our widget is doing. So we will add it here. No, no let's just replace the existing one. Right, did I add two? Okay. So let's refresh the page. And now, where is the cool stuff? That's the cool stuff. Where's the Hello World widget? Here's the Hello World widget. And you see there is a really useless checkbox here on top where we can say yes, no. We can even apply it. But as you know, our widget is doing anything than just saying Hello World. But I hope this already gives you an idea how easy it is to create own widgets, the real interesting stuff. So if you like it, have a look at my other videos. But that's all for today. Thanks and bye.